Thank you. Uh, so uh, here I would like to welcome Professor Sudip Sarkar. It's my privilege to introduce uh, Professor Sudip Mishra. Uh, Sudip Mishra is a professor and INA in Abdul Kalam Technology Innovation National Fellow in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the Indian Institute of Techn uh, Technology, Kharagpur. He received his PhD degree in Computer Science from Carlton University in Ottawa, Canada. Uh, his current research interests include wireless sensor networks and Internet of Things. Professor Mishra has published over 460 scholarly research papers and 12 books. He has won nine research paper awards in different conferences and four best paper awards in IEEE journals. He was awarded the IEEE Comsoc Asia Pacific Outstanding Young Researcher Award at IEEE Globcom uh, 2012, California, USA. He was also the recipient of several academic awards and fellowships such as the Faculty Excellence Award, IIT Kharagpur, Young Scientist Award, National Academy of Science India, Young Systems Scientist Award, System Society of India, Young Engineers Award, Institute of Engineers India, Canadian Governor General's uh, Academic Gold Medal at Carlton University, the University Outstanding Graduate Student Award in the doctoral level at Carlton University and the National Thanks. Academy of Sciences India, Savannah uh, Jayanti Puraskar Golden Jubilee Award, Samsung Innovation Award in 2014 at IIT Kharagpur. IETE Bivan Behri Sen Memorial Award in 2014 and the Kajas 360 Outstanding Faculty Award in Computer Science for the year 2018 from the Honorable Minister of Human Resource Development and HRD of India. Twice consecutively, he was the recipient of the IT Police System General Best Paper Award in 2018, 2019, and 2020. He was awarded the Canadian Government's prestigious. NSERC postdoctoral fellowship and the Alexander von Humboldt research fellowship in Germany. His team received the GYTI award 2018 in the hands of the president of India for socially relevant innovation. Misa has been serving as the associate editor of different journals such as ITVL transaction on mobile computing, ITVL transaction on vehicular technology. IEEE Transaction on Sustainable Computing, IEEE Network, IEEE System Journals. He is a fellow of the IEEE National Academy of Sciences India, NASI, Indian National Academy of Engineers, INAE, the Institute of Institution of Engineering and Technology, IET, UK, British Computer Society, BCS, UK, Royal Society of Public Health, RSPH, UK, and the Institution of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering, IETE, India. Professor Misra is the distinguished lecturer of the IEEE Communication Society. He has been serving the executive committee of IEEE Kharagpur section since 2008 in different capacities. Previously, he is the chair of IEEE Kharagpur section. Misra is the ACM distinguished member. He is also the director of and director and co founder of the IoT startup. Sensor Drop Network Private Limited. Further details about him is available in the, his website. So I welcome you, sir, for your uh, keynote. Thank you. Okay, so thank you so much uh, for the introduction. I hope uh, once more, could you please confirm that I'm audible to you? You are audible, sir. Okay. Okay. And I also hope that my slide is visible in the full screen mode. Could you please confirm that my slide is visible to you in the full screen mode? Uh, so it is not showing or you are not able to see the slide or it is not showing in the full screen mode? It is showing, sir. Please continue, sir. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay, so uh, once again, uh, good morning uh, to all of you for um, uh, good morning and also uh, thank you for attending uh, the talk today <clears throat> in the morning. Uh, and uh, um, so I'm very much uh, thankful 
to the conference organizers and also uh, the administration of NIT Warangal for inviting me to deliver this talk. Um, so as you can see that uh, uh, I'm going to talk on IoT applications in healthcare. Um, so, uh, you know, so this is how I've segmented my talk. So I'm first going to, uh, you know, put relevance of the topic and um, I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, some of the latest developments that are happening uh, on IoT in healthcare. Um, and then uh, the later, later part of the talk, I'm going to uh, discuss uh, some of the works that we have been doing in our labs, uh, in our lab, the Swell lab, uh, in this particular domain. So, um, yeah, so uh, as we all know that throughout the world, not just in our country or just in China, that there is an increase in population. So whether it is, uh, you know, due to immigrations or whether, you know, it is a natural phenomena. Um, so, but, you know, almost every country is witnessing an increase in population. Along with that, uh, you know, it is also observed that there are a growing number of diseases uh, that are occurring uh, in different parts of the world. And very recently, we have seen the long span of, uh, you know, sicknesses uh, owing to the COVID-19 virus. And um, uh, not, on, not only COVID-19, you know, so we also know that there is this dengue virus, infections, malaria, and many others, basically. You know, if you go to African countries, there is yellow fever, many others, basically. So there are a growing number of diseases, and consequently, you know, so uh, there is an increase in the number of patients that the healthcare facilities are witnessing. Um, along with that, uh, there is a rise in demand for healthcare infrastructure, medical facilities, and resources. Um, so, so what is happening is always, you know, so there are only a limited number of healthcare professionals know, who can cater to a fixed number of patients per day, right? And, uh, you know, it is also not so feasible to increase the healthcare capacities, uh, you know, uh, overnight. So it's not so easy. And uh, at the same time, you know, we also have number of DHS increasing, the population increasing. So consequently, the number of patients increasing. Yes. Sir, uh, sorry to interrupt. Sir, slides are not uh, moving. Sir. Just, just what is it? These are all like bugs, basically. Uh, let me. Achha, okay. Um, now it's okay. Sir. Yeah, now it is moving. Achha. So basically, you know, it's a known bug with uh, the full screen mode of uh, Google Meet. You know, many times this problem happens, so I put it in the reading mode. Yeah, but it is manageable now, sir. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all these problems, uh, you know, are increasing due to numbers, basically. And at the same time, uh, you know, the we have all seen, like you know, it happens to most of us, and it happens to many of our family members and other patients also. That often we forget that we have to take medicines. Let us say that we are on a course of medicines and either we forget a particular dose or, you know, we do not take it on, uh, uh, take it in time, right? So basically, you know, that also affects uh, our, you know, illness, right? So it takes time, more time to recover from the illness that we have. So this is also another concern that is, Typical, it's a typical problem everywhere in the world, and this is also a problem that has to be addressed. Um, so, uh, so, so in the IoT community, you know, so uh, researchers like us, you know, we have been thinking like, you know, how we can address this particular issue. So, uh, 
so the whole idea is that can we offer medical connectivity um, so that you know so the patients don't have to travel uh, to the hospitals and other medical facilities uh, the way they would normally do in a conventional manner so uh, this is where iot basically comes very handy and uh, uh, so so basically you know so the whole idea is that can can we uh, can we offer different types of healthcare services to individuals uh, you know even when uh, they are at their home uh, or you know they are in their office doing their work so instead of them having to come to the hospitals can we offer the healthcare services at their doorsteps so even if like they are traveling somewhere so let us say that i am traveling from kharagpur to delhi and even when i am going abroad you know so do i still have to go to a new city and visit a hospital or can we can i continue to enjoy the 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 health services even when i am on travel so this is where iot basically becomes very useful so iot basically can help to interconnect hospitals interconnect hospitals with patients and also patients with patients so this is possible through the internet connectivity in the backbone to deliver progressive and quality healthcare services to the individuals or the patients who require them so over here i would like to mention that particularly um you know the way things are moving is that nowadays there are very small but powerful medical devices medical grade devices that are available so many of them are wearable devices so basically you know i have a uh, wrist watch kind of thing which i can put on my wrist and you know my body parameters will get uh, you know continuously monitored so similarly there are different other types of wearable devices also which are becoming very popular gradually so you will find like you know there are many different types of wearable healthcare devices which you will be able to find in the market you know you in the society you know in the amongst your friends or colleagues you will see that they are wearing all these different types of medical devices so you can you know it starts from monitoring the vital parameters of a patient to advanced uh, levels of uh, you know health healthcare monitoring so all these things basically are possible with the help of these wearable devices so earlier you know even like until a couple of years back most of these devices used to be uh, you know uh, most of these devices used to be um, you know uh, for amateur purposes right so uh, you know so individuals they would wear them and you know just out of curiosity just like a smart watch they would wear and you know they wanted to get a feel and so on but now gradually we are moving from mere wearable devices to advanced diagnostic devices so it is not merely wearable device for getting an idea about the condition of a patient but also you can do advanced level you know uh, monitoring of patients through advanced technology plus the advanced analytics basically you know combined together you can get very powerful systems so the whole idea through this kind of interconnectivity is that you know we want to deliver using iot we want to deliver basically connectivity of anything in the world uh, which may be located anywhere and at any time so we want to have kind of an ecosystem to deliver e health services so now let us try to understand that what is the overall schematic for uh, you know developing iot systems in healthcare so i hope that everybody knows that iot is about you know developing systems which will remain interconnected 
so basically you know we have different physical objects different things as they are called and you want to interconnect them so there are very good reasons why you want to have this kind of interconnectivity but basically you know can you leverage this kind of interconnectivity and can can we basically monitor the conditions of patients hospitals other medical infrastructure right and so on and so forth including mobile units like uh, you know ambulances so these things in internet of things can be any physical object as i said and in the context of healthcare we are talking about sensor enabled uh, physical objects like x ray machines or you know uh, uh, oxygen uh, oxygen support systems or pulse oximeter or uh, you know glucose monitoring systems and so on so these are all like different physical objects which can be interconnected to have this iot system for healthcare so there are sensors or things you know sensor enabled things let me call that way so which are going to collect different physiological parameters or other medical parameters from the infrastructure and these things through the backbone communication network which is again connected through some kind of a gateway so you know that the data are sent to some somewhere basically and nowadays basically most of these data are sent to the cloud and in the cloud basically we store the data and also most of these cloud services they also have facilities for you know analytics so you can use the cloud platforms for both storage and data analytics so as you can see like this is a typical kind of scenario of delivering iot based healthcare okay so we have using iot based healthcare we can deliver different types of services for example telehealth education telehealth data data services are very important nowadays so we'll talk about that also telemedicine telesurgery telemonitoring so let us take them up one by one in terms of education basically you know so uh, nowadays particularly during the covid time we have seen that people are leveraging technology and even like you know at this moment what is happening is that i could not physically attend the conference where you are uh, at the moment so i am using the technology basically to deliver my talk to basically share some of the view points that i have on this topic and so on so just think that can we apply similar sort of thing and even more because we are talking about not just the near internet but we are talking about internet of things so can we basically utilize this sort of environment for tele learning right similar to what we are doing at the moment tele mentoring tele mentoring means like you know in medical fraternity particularly this is very important the senior doctors often have to mentor the junior doctors so tele mentoring tele robotic surgery right we'll talk about it a little bit more but tele robotic surgery means like you know i might be seated in kharagpur and as a surgeon i might be performing a surgery of a on a patient who might be seated somewhere else let us see in delhi right so tele robotic surgery and tele consultation so patients basically they can consult with the doctors who might not be physically located so this sort of platform telehealth education platform would enable knowledge delivery anytime and anywhere now telehealth education by remote research initiatives setting up ad adequate cyber infrastructure collaboration or demonstration centers remote clinical trials or camps are all different types of services that are within the purview of telehealth education so decentralized platforms for medical education and training can be offered for to the healthcare service providers from different locations around the globe not necessarily even that they are located in the same country so this sort of platform basically apart from what you can guess they have different benefits different other benefits such as that there is no single point of failure 
there is round the clock support so let us say as a doctor during the daytime i might be very busy right so i might want to tele learn somewhere uh, you know in the odd hours like late in the night and so on so this sort of round the clock support is possible and also diversified management of the systems are possible with the help of this kind of infrastructure now comes telehealth data as we all know that data is invaluable and so is healthcare data and in fact not so is but even more is healthcare data so specialized health related information dissemination to health service uh, you know community education firms research organizations right can be delivered if we have the data so once we have the data we can basically create a knowledge base out of that particular data which can be shared and then used by the medical practitioners and the doctors whenever they require so that way they can basically you know these sort of systems can allow them to deliver effective and timely care so whether it is the previous benefit or whether it is the telehealth data all these are dependent on all these benefits are dependent on the uh, ensuring that there is availability of broadband internet services there should be enough workforce and there should be awareness in the remote or rural areas of a country next comes telemedicine in telemedicine as this name suggests basically the patients can do tele consultation remotely with the doctors who might be located uh, you know in, a, in 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 some other part of the country so this basically assists the remote primary care uh, physicians to deliver uh, a diagnosis on the patient so uh, so this sort of telemedicine basically would use uh, different types of computing devices and software uh, to serve the patients from neglected uh, uh, from from the neglected populations so telemedicine is a very popular choice nowadays particularly in india i'm sure that all of you have heard about telemedicine it is being practiced by major hospitals like apollo uh, you know dison and many others basically you know they are uh, they are offering this kind of telemedicine facility so using this kind of telemedicine facility i might be located somewhere in the northeast and i connect with a doctor who over the video conference is going to advise like you know what i should be doing and the doctor might be sit 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 situated somewhere in kolkata so this is the kind of thing that is possible with the help of these sort of technologies so on the right hand side you can see a figure of exactly this sort of thing that i just mentioned that remote monitoring by operators is possible through web apps and uh, the data basically are sent from the different infrastructure and the patients to the cloud system analytics are executed and the results of these analytics are fed to the remote monitoring station surgery is the counterpart of medicine so similarly tele surgery is the counterpart of telemedicine so in the same way as remote uh, you know uh, medical consultations can be done the promise that tele surgery makes is to uh, perform safe and precise surgical operations from remote or mobility restricted uh, patients and their areas uh, you know so all these different types of surgical uh, uh, you know surgical procedures can be performed now the problem is that tele robotics basically tele robotics or tele surgery this concept basically has been there for some time but it has not been so much successful the reason is we are not just talking about robotic surgery which is already being practiced but we are talking about uh, you know remotely monitored robotic surgery now for this basically the up to 4g connectivity that used to be there that is not very sufficient so since the last couple of years the concept of 5g and beyond has come up right and as we will see very shortly 5g and beyond has lot of different promises so 
so we can basically uh, 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 you know we can get very extremely high data rate uh, uh, in the transmission uh, ultra low latency uh, you know ultra reliability so these sort of things basically are promised in 5g and beyond so obviously as you can understand like you know if you are doing any kind of tool, tel tele surgical operations that would require uh, you know enhanced uh, image and video quality which is one of the key factors uh, to operate uh, on on patients oper uh, you know for, for the medical team to operate on patients safely and precisely okay so that's uh, tele surgery then we have tele monitoring tele monitoring includes sensing collecting monitoring and sending patients physiological data over the network to the healthcare service provider or other stakeholders for further analysis depending on what they want to do with the data so this can be done during or after medica medication or surgery both are possible so this basically uh, this sort of tele monitoring the advantage is that remotely you can monitor a patient and the family doctor or the family members would get an alert about any abnormal health condition that they have got. So these telemonitoring systems use wearable devices like the ones that I mentioned or non-invasive data collecting devices, uh, composite systems, invasive and non-invasive. Uh, and then we have basic analytics and decision support systems and the recommender systems. So as I was telling you that there are very attractive value propositions through the integration or the application of IoT in healthcare. So you can get very powerful e-health monitoring systems. So this is where 5G becomes very useful. And as I was telling you a little while back that 5G talks about you know, offering different types of services like high throughput, ultra reliability. Hmm. Uh, then uh, increasing high density uh, of devices supporting that um, ultra low latency ultra high reliability and so on okay, right so this is on the picture you can see basically you know what is implied by each of them so um, 5g basically that integration or adoption of 5g in healthcare has got numerous benefits or opportunities. It is possible now to have real-time high-speed clinical data delivery. It is possible to perform the robotic, remote robotic surgery, which used to be a dream or a science fiction until you know several a couple of years back. Now this is uh, very much possible. The only thing is that uh, backbone uh, connectivity is very crucial. You need to have a high-end kind of connectivity for performing remote robotic surgery. It is possible to have decentralized patient care beyond hospital setup. So the patients that I was telling you earlier don't even have to go to a hospital setup or something similar. At the convenience of their homes or their offices, they can get these uh, you know, different patient care uh, uh, services. So it is also possible to integrate these sort of systems for healthcare using augmented reality and virtual reality for training complex medical procedures. Large kind of data files which are coming from different types of radiological tests, etc., like X-rays, CT scans, sonography reports, etc. You know, you can now with the integration or adoption of 5G, you can now easily and rapidly you can transmit the data files, which are very large in size. So this is from a business point of view, the value proposition or the op opportunities that lie with the integration of 5G in healthcare. So as you can see over here, that the major part of it is born by healthcare, uh, sorry, yeah, so by, by patient applications. And then followed by that, we have other medical applications and healthcare data management. So the total revenue of 75.7 .7 billion USD is expected by 2026 with the introduction of 5G in the healthcare industry. So this is on the right hand side are basically these are the pictures of some of the wearable devices which are owned by the patients 
on their body to provide or to enable continuous real time monitoring of their health these wearable devices can provide timely insights about several health parameters of the patient and the doctors about the condition different wearable motion sensors uh, or trackers involving inertial measurement unit sensors are utilized for human activity recognition so these devices basically wearable devices can be non invasive or invasive non invasive means like you know you wear it externally and invasive means like you know you have to either put some uh, you know you have to perform some surgical operation to put the sensor inside your body or you know so maybe there will be a needle prick or something you know some invasive uh, 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 you know uh, systems basically can be adopted their concepts can be adopted by them so non invasive devices examples are ecg blood pressure emg eeg pulse rate body temperature these are some of these non invasive devices they send they they they, they uh, collect the data and then they send either locally to some local server or they have to be sent to the remote uh, uh, location so they these data have to be sent so the patient data basically is then transmitted through the transmission gateway using protocols such as bluetooth wifi z wave zigbee and lora on the right hand side what you see is basically the system architecture of a non invasive system it is called wise wise is an acronym for wearable iot cloud based health monitoring system so here basically multiple wearable sensors would gather signals via the wise band and the data collected from the band uh, would directly uh, uh, band basically directly transmitted is directly transmitted to the cloud without the need of transmission gateway and both the real time data and uh, the web based data visualization is possible Uh, for uh, you know so this sort of visualization is possible for the authorized or registered users so as you can see over here we have typically this is a typical kind of structure of non invasive devices it starts from non invasive systems basically it starts from the sensing layer networking layer data processing layer and application layer right so these are the four main components four main layers uh, of iot based healthcare using wise interhealth is an, another system which has been proposed for monitoring the human lifestyle in a decentralized mobile fashion to prevent health issues resulting from uh, food and physical activity disorders so on the right hand side the figure that you see is exactly doing that so we have the prevention program fitting into the inter iot uh, then we also have the body cloud and universal all of which are basically throwing in data to the inter inter, uh, inter iot cloud so these devices they can be invasive or non invasive invasive means like you know you have to perform some invasive procedure like a small operation or you know you have to needle prick or something you know so so this sort of non invasive uh, uh, sorry invasive systems plus non invasive sense systems uh, or sensors like these wearable handcuffs etc etc you know, so these are um, these are non invasive sensors so the data that are collected from both of them um, we can help uh, 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 to monitor the conditions of the patients so composite systems basically as i said they would have uh, they would have different types of sensors some of which are going to be non invasive whereas some of them are going to be invasive invasive sensors would include something like the glucose monitoring sensor and so on so like this basically we have rehison support systems rehison support systems basically offer Uh, you know different different types of decision support uh, for uh, based on the data that are collected and stored in the form of knowledge base so it can help the medical personnel and the patients to have better understanding of the conditions that we have so the whole idea is to maintain the historical data 
about the previous ailments of the patients, treatments and consultations. Then you can have statistical analysis and better recognition of the historical data using which you can predict the future trends in the patient's health. And this is very important, predictive analytics basically to enable patients for these pre preventive measures is a very wonderful uh, thing. So why it is wonderful? Because, you know, so well ahead of time, you can predict, the patients can predict like, you know, what they are going to get in future and with what sort of percentage it is going to happen. So there are decision support systems that have been developed for different types of lifestyle diseases, including uh, cardiovascular diseases, including uh, chronic kidney diseases, uh, for strokes, cerebral stroke, and so on. Um, for diabetes also, there are decision support systems and so on. So then we have the recommender systems that gather health-related data to build a digital inventory. And the inventory has the patient's health data, possible course of treatment for different ailments, and the list of healthcare facilities that are available. So we have recommender systems for diabetes, which can tell you exactly like the kind of medication that you need as a, as a diabetic or and or basically the type of food, exact amount of food, the quality of food. So all of these basically could be monitored with the help of this sort of thing for diabetes. So there are recommender systems that have been developed for doctors because the doctors you know what they can do is if they have a lot of case history and other previous patients models for trust in their doctors and their consultation histories you can create recommender systems that can help doctors to uh, perform uh, different types of uh, you know uh, uh, different types of advices they can deliver different types of advices so recommender systems some of the examples include cadder CADR stands for Cloud Assisted Drug Recommendation Service. So as I said, like, you know, appropriate dose of drug at the exact same time, this is very important, right? And CADR basically contributes to some extent uh, in, the, in this direction. TrueTrip is another recommender system and so on. So basically, to just to summarize, what are the benefits of uh, IoT in healthcare? to send immediate alert during any kind of medical emergency, reducing the physical need to go to a healthcare facility, eliminating the, uh, the, uh, the, eliminating the geographical barrier for rural or semi-urban uh, regions, ubiquitous and wide range healthcare facilities via virtual uh, presence, early detection of any anomaly in the monitored physiological data, and the prediction of any disease from the, uh, from the detected anomaly. So that was the generic part of my talk, uh, you know, where I discussed about how IoT can help in delivering quality healthcare services. Now I'm going to throw you throw some light on uh, some of the initiatives that we have taken since the last couple of years on IoT based healthcare. So one of the systems about which we are very much proud, it is named the Ambusen system. AMBU stands for, AMBUSEN system basically offers ambulatory healthcare uh, services to patients in transit. Why this is important? Because, you know, often in our country, if you are taking a patient to the primary healthcare center or the, or the secondary healthcare center, after some time, if the patient cannot be treated or the doctors are not very confident, they are going to refer the patient to some for remote consultation uh, uh, in some remote area uh, sorry in, in some cities uh, so in some city hospital so all these uh, uh, so so for basically you know what what i wanted to mean is that from the remote rural areas to the city hospitals the patients are carried in the ambulances and while they are being carried in the ambulances uh, their condition uh, is not even monitored you know, and many times, basically, there is not even an onboard paramedic. Somehow the patients travel for several hours at a stretch, four hours, six hours is very common. And they uh, arrive at, uh, you know, a reasonably good hospital in the cities. 
Now, uh, because patients often die in transit uh, due to lack of adequate uh, medical uh, facilities and uh, advice, uh, so we developed a system which can help uh, for continuous remote monitoring of patients traveling in ambulances end to end. We can do the end to end monitoring. So, Ambusense basically can offer telemedicine and remote healthcare services, uh, uh, can reduce the emergency response time, can offer real time patient status monitoring and uh, digitized medical history. So, Ambusense evolved into something called AP1 version 1, which came up with a very compact size and shape. And also, it could, um, you know, it can perform different things that was not possible in ambulance. AP1V1 got evolved to AP1NG. NG stands for next generation. And here basically we uh, uh, we made it possible to have on device visualization, uh, uh, on device visualization. And this also, as you can see, this device has touch screen enabled device login and fingerprint authentication and login. So this facility has been given because many times we have seen that particularly when the patients are traveling, uh, sorry, when, when, when an individual are traveling, uh, uh, you know, so uh, during uh, the uh, travel, basically, you know, we see that sometimes they, due to some accidents, you know, there are victims who are lying and they are unconscious and nobody knows, you know, their identity. So we have included these facilities to ensure that they can be connected, you know, uh, to their, uh, you know, to their home or other uh, you know, uh, facilities or like medical facilities. So there are different features of AP1NG, uh, touch screen uh, based user interface, live data visualization, biometric authentication, fingerprint based login access for emergency situations and plug and play sensor integration. Plug and play sensor integration is very important because we are talking about like, you know, can we put some sensor uh, or take out a sensor and put another one so most of these IoT systems that have been developed do not support plug and play. So you can very easily, you can take out something and put in something else. You know, so this requires a lot of manipulation in the backend software, basically, you know, software side manipulation in the backend. And this basically has been made uh, possible in AP1NG. And uh, so uh, there is also the smart digital stethoscope that we have developed. It is just a replica of the actual stethoscope. So we have digitized all the parameters of the stethoscope and made all these data available remotely. So it is no longer required that the doctors will have to hold the stethoscope on your chest and listen to different sounds or monitor your overall heart condition and so on. So remotely you can monitor uh, the doctors, you know, so they might monitor the different parameters that would be, uh, uh, you know, measured using a stethoscope, but they can do that remotely. So, uh, you know, so this was the smart digital stethoscope, which started as the Digiscope. Digiscope basically was not good because it was not fast enough. So we evolved it into scope edge through the integration of edge computing, right? We also developed this AP1WL system, right? Um, so this system basically, uh, you know, so with the help of uh, different, uh, what is it called? Uh, these, uh, you know, different components basically, you know, it is possible to uh, reconfigure these systems and put different types of, uh, you know, sensors, or you can, over the year, you can, um, you can, you can basically, uh, you know, uh, over the year, you can uh, manage the different components of the system uh, very easily. So on demand, basically, over the year, adapter configuration is possible with the help of this sort of system, AP1WL. And this particular work was accepted in IEEE Infocom conference about two years, two to three years back. And we are very much, uh, you know, proud of this particular work. So with this, we come to an end of this particular session. And I would like to give credit to all the students that have worked on it. And, uh, uh, you know, so particularly these are some of the students, but uh, there are many others and they are the ones who make these 
kind of systems and the research works uh, possible. So thank you. If you have any question, I would be happy to hear from you. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for a wonderful talk. Now we can take a few questions uh, from offline audience. Any questions? You may raise hand. Uh, is it audible, sir? I can hear you. I can hear you, but I'm not sure whether I can hear from the audience. You know, we can try. Are you able to hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Please go ahead. So I'm I'm Udrata. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, nice meeting you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you. It's a nice talk. But just a quick question actually, because these days uh, the doctors actually they say that the, the performance evaluation parameters for the use of the accuracy, precision, recall, accuracy, precision, recall, etc., are not good enough for healthcare. So do you see that there should be a new type of performance evaluation parameter for healthcare? You know, this is a very, you know, so not only, I mean, so wherever we have analytics, right? So yeah, there are so right. many, you know, so whether it is healthcare analytics or other analytics, right? So uh, basically this is kind of an issue, uh, uh, you know, that determines the, uh, uh, what should I say, the, 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 the usability of the results, right? So let us say that we predict something. But then, you know, the accuracy of the prediction will be something, right? Or, yes, you know, right. there are other parameters which basically determine the quality of uh, the analytics that are performed. Um, yeah, so uh, so so uh, this is basically a standing issue with any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of uh, analytics or any kind of application of machine learning. Um, yeah, and uh, there are so many different things like, you know, the quality of the data set, you know the volume of the data set uh, and many others basically you know which uh, are uh, different determinants uh, to understand you know so what is the credibility of the analytics that we are able to get so for example you know so one very simple thing is the ircTC uh, you know so we see that uh, you know the, uh, whether a particular birth will be confirmed or not uh, we see that like you know 75 percent uh, Eighty percent, you know, the, these sort of figures mentioned, and many times, you know, it uh, it works, but sometimes I have seen like you know they don't work, right? So the birth is still not confirmed, even if the accuracy was quite, uh, not accuracy, so the the, the percentage uh, figure was. So these sort of things are going to happen because you know lots of lots of probabilistic uh, measures are there. Uh, so yeah, but uh, you know there are ways in which we can improve. These kind of parameters. Yeah. So why I ask this question is that here, how do we convince the doctors? If the doctors are not very well convinced with this precision recall, reference codes, AUC, AUC, ROC, etc. Right. So they want something else. So can we come out with a different type of performance evaluation parameter wherein we can convince the medical practices? No, so there are two things, right? So one is that whatever data we are getting from the different sensors, for example, you know, so uh, typically, you know, unless the sen sensor is malfunctioning or the accuracy of the sensor is not very good, you know, so typically there is, you know, so there is, uh, uh, you know, we can we can trust the data that are coming directly from the sensor. The only thing is that uh, whenever we are doing predictions or classification or whatever, you know, so those kind of machine learning things, then, uh, you know, whether you can trust uh, those things are not so basically you know one way is that uh, you know we can never say like uh, you know whether a particular machine learning based system uh, you know whether we can depend solely on them uh, rather uh, you know so we can we have to correlate the findings uh, with the observations that doctors are making directly from the patient right not solely depending on these analytics and their results but basically you know, also to correlate with their actual findings uh, by interacting with the patients thank you okay thank you very much sir any other questions uh, from the offline audience 
online audience, you can raise your hands or you can post your questions on chat box so that we can take them. Okay, so okay, if there are no other questions, so I would like to thank uh, Professor Sudip Mishra sir from IIT Kharku for his wonderful talk. Okay, so there is one question from Professor Killer sir. Yes, yes, Professor Killer. Nice Are to I see you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I am audible, sir. Yes, yes. Please, uh, please speak, but try to speak a little louder. So we are arranging on mic. Yeah. Uh, now I think. Now I think yes, it's now it is much better. So my question is that uh, today or tomorrow or after a few years, this uh, things are going to spread in the society. The five G technology will come, and a lot of five G devices will be available in the market. Mm. But uh, all over these devices and uh, uh, techniques are available. How they can be standardized? Otherwise, there is very uh, uh, chance that these these things are going to be manipulated, and anybody can make any device. Anybody uh, de develops any protocol. Uh, so unless they are standardized, uh, like other technologies, so what kind of standardization is going on? There is not. There are lots of different types of standardization efforts in the healthcare domain. Right. Um, so it starts from the data format, right? It starts from so there there is something called HL7, etc. So it starts from the data format. Uh, then uh, we also have device level standardization, right? And there are bodies, you know. So depending on what sort of standardization has to be done, there are different bodies. Like in India, also we have, uh, you know, uh, we have different types of standardization bodies. You know, not only ISO, but also there are others specifically for healthcare um so uh, so it depends like you know what you want to do right so even like you know any kind of electronic device you know not just healthcare basically any kind of electronic device uh, there are standardization requirements for those also particularly you know if you have to use them uh, in uh, you know in uh, uh, hospital or you know similar kind of environments there are certain requirements right so uh, uh, yeah so standardization to some extent can address this but you know so if you are talking about tampering the device and anybody can come up with any device and protocol etc you know, so ultimately uh, not only standardization but also a lot of validation is performed right so before it is actually so whenever somebody is developing this kind of system uh, you know it goes through a lot of validation uh, experiments right so to ensure that you 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 know you get whatever you are trying to achieve right so yeah so lots of uh, possibilities are there so i mean unless it is validated and standardized basically nobody is going to adopt your solutions okay. thank you ah professor Rath, where are you oh yeah yeah you are you are basically sandwiched between uh, two of your <laughs> colleagues. <laughs> yeah, okay, please go ahead. Yeah, my question is just continuation to Dr. Slab's uh, like uh, interoperability of those devices. Like, uh, I mean, those devices. Probability of what? Sorry? Interoperability of those you know, sensor devices. Yes, yes. And, uh, the yeah, standard Yes. Those are also very important. Uh, like, interoperability, uh, in, this is what I was showing you that, you know, so interoperability is a very important thing. And there are so many different research works that are going on on interoperability, starting from protocol level interoperability to device level mm -hmm. interoperability and many others. Basically, there is something called semantic interoperability. You know, so lots of different things are there. You know, so some of the PhD thesis from our group we have worked on certain types of interoperability. One of my present students, she is working on semantic interoperability with IoT healthcare data and so on. So depending, so, so it starts, you know, so lots of different things like, you know, whether, whether the meaning that you are deriving, for instance, from one part of the system correlates with the meaning that you are trying to de derive from other part of the system. 
right so because we are talking about uh, you know con connected systems right so let us say uh, even like i will give you one example uh, let us say that uh, uh, you know so uh, uh, the lipid profile of a particular patient who is located in india you know it may not be uh, normal uh, but the same parameters for a patient who are who is located in another part of the world let us say in western countries that that would be normal right so the same data would have two different meanings in india it is something in somewhere else it will be different right so uh, this is just an example small example basically you know you can extend it for a lot of different things right so why this is important because ultimately we are talking about in iot we are talking about a connected world right it's completely connected all systems will be connected everywhere so this sort of thing this sort of vision is existing so um, you know uh, uh, this sort of uh, uh, interoperability is very important uh, like this basically this device level or protocol level in interoperability you know because the devices are uh, you know developed by different vendors using different individual standards so you know how you can make them talk to each other because ultimately they all have to run under the same roof how you can make them talk to each other uh, you know so that is also very important similarly one protocol talking to another protocol it should not happen that you know they work in silo that is not going to be useful so like this basically you know so lots of different considerations and interoperability is a very hot topic of research in iot in general and definitely you know it is very important in healthcare also thank you thank you professor okay so uh, thank you very much sir for your uh, wonderful talk and also i would like to thank our offline audience uh, they have asked the questions and some good discussion also happened and clarified uh, most of the things thank you very much sir yeah so uh, i i i am missing like you know sitting between the great audience that i can see so i i hope that next time i would be able to visit nit warangal last time also like couple of days back there was another meeting i could not attend it physically but uh, let us hope uh, you know so next time i would be able to visit nit yes, I and i i i think uh, you know rashmi would be able to confirm i i think it was the same seminar room where i had delivered a talk a couple of years back is it the same uh, room or different one sir yes sir enic city seminar hall yeah yeah okay